Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ty Howe. Uh, I did my final research project on coaching conflict management within an athletic team. Um, it want, it's uh, something that applies to my career and future goals. Uh, I want to be a uh, football coach. Um, so something that is commonplace in our workplace is conflict, not only uh, between uh, games and with other teams, but amongst ourselves as far as coaches and athletes go. Um, in this paper, I focused on more of the, uh, the conflicts between athletes um, and as a coach, how to approach those conflicts. Um, to, uh, one of the main points that I tried to make in my paper was um, how to, uh, is conflict prevention. Um, if you create the right environment for your uh, team and athletes that you can actually prevent uh, many conflicts. Um, one of the first things I talked about was developing a, a positive team culture. Um, team culture is something that can prevent conflicts because it is, uh, it, it's just that uh, air, it's, it's everything about your team. It's a positive environment. Um, to develop a, a positive uh, team culture, one must start with developing goals. And uh, I believe in, in SMART goals. Um, they're SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-related. Um, the reasoning behind these having these type of goals is one: uh, the life lifetime of a team is only limited to, you know, in high school four seasons. Um, a player has four seasons to play as, as far as eligibility go, but that team that he's on that specific year is its lifetime is only one year. It's only one season. Um, so things must be specific to that team. Uh, they must be measurable. Um, you know, obviously wins and losses are measurable, um, but uh, you have to be able to attain those goals, whether it's nine wins or whether it's uh, um, becoming a, uh, you know, a, a better team by uh, yards rushed or uh, offensive statistics. Those are measurable and attainable. Um, they must be relevant to your team, obviously, if we talk about specific, but time related is a big piece to it because of the lifetime of a team. Um, the next thing I, I talked about was uh, having core values as a coach and, and making sure your team has core values. Uh, an example that I use is a, a, one of my mentors, someone I work for, James Franklin. He, uh, he has four core values that are plastered everywhere within his uh, the football facility at Penn State. And he constantly talks to them, to the press, to the media, and makes sure everyone knows his, his four core values. Number one is having a positive attitude. Number two is having a great work ethic. Number three is competing in everything you do. And number four is being willing to sacrifice. Um, and for a team to have core values, that's the machine that you use to reach your goals. Um, so you, you use those things to get to where you're going. Um, and that'll help you build a positive team culture, um, making sure everyone is on the same page and using the right uh, methods to get to achieve the goals and um, to build an overall positive atmosphere. Uh, the next thing I talk about coaches must do to help um, prevent conflicts and also de-escalate conflicts because, um, you know, players and athletes can also be uh, conflict managers. Um, it's to develop leadership abilities among team members. Uh, obviously, leadership is one of the most sought-after qualities. Uh, there's so many books and papers and different kinds of leadership theories. Um, and, and honestly, a lot of people think that leadership is something that people are born into or just have, but uh, leadership can be developed. Um, coaches can develop leadership by exposing their athletes to different experiences, and it's not always comfortable. Um, coaches can put athletes in a tough situation as far as uh, in, in, a, in a game uh, and, and ask them to lead and carry their team, or, um, you know, from, hey, you got to break down the huddle and, uh, and uh, talk to the team after, the, after practice or whatever it may be. Um, so exposing athletes to those experiences will help them gain leadership abilities. 
Um, the next thing is to, to be role models for leadership with their team. So coaches that can go out there and they can, and they can stand up and talk and um, show how you want to be a leader. You, you know, you can uh, have good sportsmanship and, and all those types of things. Um, and so coaches can be role models to develop leadership. And also they got to support their, their leaders. Um, a coach needs to uh, prepare them by letting them lead the stretch lines. By uh, if an athlete is trying to be a leader and um, a conflict arises, they need to step in, or um, and sometimes they can let it happen. So their co their leaders will develop that conflict management and um, leadership abilities. So it's very important that coaches develop leaders among their teams because they're not always there in the locker room or wherever conflicts may arise. That these leaders need to help. Um, manage the team. Uh, the last thing um, I talked about was mediation as a coach. Um, coaches, are, obviously, you want to prevent as many conflicts as you can by a team culture and leaders uh, preventing them, but there are conflicts that arise. Coaches are called to wear many hats, whether it be landscaper, coach, father figure, trainer, but they got to be a mediator as well. Um, they must mediate any conflicts that arise, so I mean, they must be Within uh, mediation, um, they got to be active listeners. Um, I talked about non-evaluative listening because it, it, it's a great activity where you can try to let uh, people come to the conclusion uh, uh, by themselves rather than you jumping in and giving them the final say-so. Now, as a coach, sometimes in the heat of battles or heat of uh, arguments or conflicts that that may not happen a person see the right way. So you, you do have to make some tough decisions. Um, I, I use the example of a player who has been in many conflicts and does something worthy of being kicked off the team. Obviously, they're never going to come to the conclusion that they should be kicked off the team or suspended. However, I mean, as a coach, you have to make that tough decision sometimes. Um, one thing, uh, another thing we talked about is separating the who from the do. Um, Dr. Kevin Elko is a sports psychologist, um, and he works with the Colts. He works with uh, uh, Alabama. He works with a lot of uh, big-time programs, and he came to NC State. Uh, he's been coming once a month for the last two months, and he, he'll continue through the football season. And he talked about conflict management with our coaches and our team. And he, he talked about separating the who from the do. Obviously, as it, it, Coaching and in life, period, you're never going to just like everyone you're around. But you have to be able to punish the action, not the person. Um, because, uh, obviously, that's what the conflicts are, has arisen from, is the action. Um, and so to, to do this, coaches have to be able to take, take aside any previous notions of, of a player or um, however that may be. And, and punish the problem and solve the problem, solve the conflict. Um, the next thing was making sure that the, the athletes know their role, whether it be a starter, um, a contributor, bench warmer, um, a scout team player. They must know their role, and, and it must be a transparent uh, team where they're able to say, hey, I am a contributor, I'm not a starter, because this guy is better than me, or I I don't hit the ball well enough, I don't run fast enough, which is all okay, but they must know that their role is valued on the team. Uh, you know, they can be the fourth string quarterback, you know, maybe they don't have as strong as arm as the other three, but they're uh, doing a great job on scout team and, help, and, and contributing to wins, and, and the athletes must know that you value them um, in their role. Uh, and also, you care about them as a person holistically. Is the last thing I touched about in, in uh, my uh, my papers. To develop athletes properly and to manage conflict, uh, as a mediator, we we must uh, make sure our athletes know that they're cared about holistically, off the field, on the field, um, and they must know we're not 
as coaches, we, obviously we, we want to win and all the, the things that go along with that, but we want to develop them as people um, and, and have them be better husbands and, and uh, people in the community and uh, brothers. And um, So to, to show that, that you care about them holistically, right? coaches can do little things such as ask um, question, how, how's your day? You know, how's your family doing? Those type of things and develop a, a connection with each member on their team. And, and that will help mediate conflicts, but also prevent any conflicts because it, they're not going to want to let the coaches down. Um, so, I mean, that's something that's important uh, to me, but it, it was important um, in, in conflict management. Um, but um, as a whole of this paper, I, I enjoyed looking into how to manage conflict uh, or how to manage conflict as a coach and, and taking it from an approach that really affects my daily life. And, um, but uh, I, uh, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the presentation and uh, congrats on it to everyone for finishing their final project. Thank you.